So once your students have mastered a basic approach to sight reading, and we'll link to an article where I explain our FAST approach to sight reading, F-A-S-T approach, it's time to strive for a higher level of sight reading ability. And so in this video, we thought we'd show you exactly how we go through four things I call mistake busters that you can use to show your students how to take a piece apart when sight reading. When I'm first teaching my students to do things, we mark them directly on the page. And as they become more adept, all of these markings instead become internalized as you would in traditional sight reading. But in the beginning, it's really helpful to have them marked right on the page. So the very first mistake buster is knowing what to ignore. And this means that your students are quick to figure out what they don't need to spend their valuable time looking at. Usually this means measures with repeated notes, simple rhythms, held notes where only one hand is playing, etc. Um, so we just cross those off as a visual reminder to not spend time on those. The second mistake buster is understanding and using knowledge of primary chords, or for your younger students, tonic and dominant. And this gives them a framework to work within as they sight read. So we just go through and circle and label the primary chords. And I label them so they know exactly what they're looking at. And then we also highlight tonic and dominant. So my students know that circled means that it's either the tonic of the piece or the dominant, and that we do it in both clefs they know how all the notes are related to each other. The third mistake buster is learning to look for relationships between notes that leap. So if your students can easily recognize melodic intervals, they're usually comfortable up to about a fifth. Um, but beyond that, it helps to be able to quickly look at other parts of the piece that can help them to decode that. So in this example, this leap here may cause some problems for piano students because it is beyond that fifth. So I teach them to look and earlier in their music to see if there's anything that they can use to help them decode. And in this case, I would look to this note and say, okay, that is only one step lower than this note. And that helps them to find a relationship um, in their piece that they can use to quickly leap um, when they get to something that's larger than a fifth. And the final mistake buster is to look for chord tones in the left hand. And this helps with any broken patterns such as Alberti bass and teaches your student to look at the overall harmonic picture rather than note by note. And it's a really great way to become an efficient sight reader. So for example, we've marked these as one chords. Now we go through and show your student that these notes in the measure that follows are simply chord tones um, from that one chord. And the same thing here at the end. It's fairly obvious, but we do it anyway just to show the relationships and get them used to being able to do that. So with these four mistake busters in place, your student's accuracy is greatly improved when they sight read. Eventually all these markings on the page aren't there, they're in their brain, but they have these landmarks that they can use um, to become more efficient and accurate.